Hello and welcome to episode 38 of the Rivercats 9 Lives podcast. Our guest this week is a man who made his big league debut last year in Sacramento Rivercat, Elliot Ramos. Hello and welcome to the uh, California Bank of Commerce 9 Lives podcast. Uh, Elliot Ramos with us. And Elliot, first of all, Merry Christmas. I hope you had a wonderful uh, holiday with your family. Uh, tell us about it. What did you guys do? You guys just all get together and have some fun? Uh, uh, the 24th, we went to my brother's house. We got together. My mom made some food. Family made some food. And then the 25th, we was at my mom's place. Uh, we send, I don't know, we have this, um, we have this uh, tradition that we uh, sing happy birth, happy birthday to the ba- We sing happy birthday to the baby Jesus, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so um, that's what we did. The 25th, we sing happy birthday to ba- baby Jesus. And uh, we was all together. My mom ba- made a big, like, fist. Everybody was eating, yeah, like, drinking and all that stuff, yeah. What, what's on the what's on the Ramos feast? What did you guys, what was what was on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, it was, menu? It was like rice mixed with beans, pork, uh, the chicken with like nice. sweet plantain in the inside, wrapped with uh, bacon, avocado, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, we was eating. Yeah, that's a great time. Now your off season workout uh, before you go to Arizona in January. What what have you been? Uh, did you take a little time off after the season? How did you kind of rest your body before getting into your workouts? So the first week, uh, so. Uh, I think I told you, but I don't know if I did. Uh, I stayed in Arizona. That's where I first stayed. And uh, I took, like, maybe, like, I was working out, like, just lifting. Took, like, three weeks, no hitting. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the last week of uh, October, that's when I started hitting. That's when I started working on some, on some stuff with uh, JV. Uh, and, yeah, after that, that's what I've been doing. I went, uh, went back home for Thanksgiving, came back, like, the 3rd, December 3rd. And now I got here like the 24th and I'm leaving the twenty the seventh. But yeah, I've been working good. I've been working the right way. Uh JV and I have been like putting a lot of stuff together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh talking a lot of baseball, talking a lot of hitting and like working in a different way, you know what I mean? Trying to find my that, that mojo that makes me special, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And you know, look, last year, let's be honest, it, it was one of those years you'll 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 look back on that year and say, Wow, I learned so much about myself and especially the first month, you know, we talk about that first five to six weeks where you just ran into so much tough luck, line drives hit right at people. You're not one to make excuses, but how is that uh, those first six weeks on you mentally knowing like thinking to yourself, I, I can't get that thing to fall in. What what was that like for you? The first six weeks? Uh, it was, it was kind of tough, but like now me looking back at it, it's like, I should have stayed with the mentality of no, like I have to keep going, getting good at bats. Uh, come uh, like trusting my move, trusting my body, trusting that I, what I'm doing is the right thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because how obviously, like you said, I was hitting the ball hard, but uh, hard, but right at people. If I had like stayed disciplined and I stayed with the same like game plan that I was doing that first couple of weeks, I think I could have better chance to like um, be more consistent. If that makes sense. Yes. But I just got in. I, I honestly, I got in my head. Uh, I was all over the place. I didn't know how to fix myself. I was trying new things, and that's when I like lost it, man. That's when I like just yeah, I got in my head too much. Yeah, you know, because it's a daily grind, and you start to after. The, and look, there were times where you went through periods where you struggled last year. You know, let's be honest, you struggled, and and for you to have that struggle for the first time, consistent struggle, that was mentally hard on you. But you, you as you said, you learned from it. And you grew from it, and uh, you're ready to go for twenty for twenty twenty three. Did you lean on your brother a little bit to talk about those things, as far as kind of trying to get out of those ruts? Um, yeah, I did. I talked to him for a little bit, and he told me like, "Hey, dude, that stuff is gonna happen. It's just like what you can control is just play the ball hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Play baseball yeah. hard. Just keep running hard. Just keep doing your thing, and and uh, obviously be positive. All you can have in this game is confidence. Just be positive. Just like yeah keep going because he, he always tells me like the talent you have the talent the work you put in the work but it's just the mentality that you have in like towards the game if that makes sense yeah so that's why he told me and I was like yeah like I mean I'm definitely these offices and I'm definitely working on my like mental wise uh, I mean I'm working mental wise uh body wise like consistency wise like repetition you know what I mean if that makes sense sure hey so your major league debut April the 10th, two for three, dream come true. 
What was that like? You you said you weren't as nervous as you thought you were going to be. What, what, tell us about the call up, the experience, Brundy telling you you're called up. How, how did it all uh, play out? Uh, so they called me up, right? I mean, it was like I started the game. It was a normal game, regular game today. And out of nowhere, Brandy took me out in the second inning. And I was like, this is so weird. Uh, a lot of guys were telling me, like, you might get called up. You, you are going to get called up. Because if they did that, you're going to get called up. But I didn't want to get my hopes up, if that right. makes sense. Yeah. Because Brandy said, like, now we're going to do something kind of like spring training vibes. Like, we're going to, like, play you two innings and then, like, so guys can get our bats. And I was like, okay, like, let's do it. I'm down. Right. I don't mind it. Like, I'm I'm a person that if a guy wants our bats and I'm in, he wants to get him whatever. You know what I mean? It is yeah. what it is. So whenever he told me, like, hey, like, uh, get your stuff. Um, you've been doing great. You've been doing good. You're going to get called up. I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. At first, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I didn't even know what to say. Yeah. I was like, damn, like, it, was, it wasn't after a one hour and a half that I called my mom. And I was like, mom, they called me up to the big leagues. And I just started, like, being excited, jumping and stuff, like, in the clubhouse. Nobody was in the clubhouse. I was by myself. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, when I got there, I was just so ready to play. I was just so ready. Like I was trying to just get ready. If that makes sense. Yeah, you you, that, you, uh, you didn't get nerve. You weren't even nervous because you like I I got a game to play, right? Yes, yes. So I was like, yes, I have to get ready for the game. I have to get like warm. I have to do this. I have to be there early. So let me get ready. And that's what I did. It wasn't after that. The next day that I was like, damn, I actually playing the big league song. Right. Like, yeah, I, I would never thought I would never thought that I was gonna be there. You know what I mean? That's so awesome. it was like, yeah, it was a great experience. And the fact that my brother played like the year before in the big leagues too. Like my brother is the guy that I like. He's the play, the baseball player that I follow my whole life, right? So doing that and like i know i made him proud you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. i think about all these stuff that's he's the first person i called he's the first person i called the first person i told and then i called my mom and my dad yeah you told me you said look when i go to the big leagues it won't even be close to as excited as i am when henry got called up is that still true really? you still that is true. by that that is true uh, that is that's still true because i mean i feel like uh, the type of player that my brother is, the type of person that he is, me as, as a brother, obviously, I'm like, he deserves it. Ain't no no one else deserves it more than him. You know what I mean? Because yeah. yep. the hard work, all, all all the stuff that he went through in like the, his baseball career. You know what I mean? Yep. It's exciting. It's exciting. It's something. It's something great. It's something that like I was looking forward to my whole life. You know what I mean? Seeing him up there and watching my brother play. You know, in the B leagues. Yeah, you were so proud of him, and especially the, the road he took, uh, the road less traveled. I mean, look, nine, nine, ten years in the minor leagues to finally get there. I know I remember interviewing you right after he got called up, and you were – it was almost like you got called up. I guess it was exactly like I was there, honestly. And when I got there to the uh, – I went to one of the Giants games that they were playing against the D-backs. Yeah. And that's when I got to, like, see him play for the first time, and I was like, man, this is cool. Like, this is – is something else. Mm, that's awesome. Now, look, I know you yeah. were with, with Holbert Cabrera and Tiny. Can you talk about those two guys, the influence they had? I know you and you and Holbert uh, know each other very well. He's taught you a lot about the game. Can you talk about those relationships, Holbert Cabrera and, of course, Tiny as well? Uh, Holbert was – um. Holbert was my manager in 2018. Yeah. Uh, a great guy. He teached me a lot, had a lot of patience with me. Um, honestly, Hober, like, he's just a great person, honestly. Like, he teaches me the basics about the game. He always tells me, like, throw a little cutoff, man. Don't miss it. Like, try to do a simple thing, run hard. Like, whenever I'm slacking or something, he will tell me. And he'll be like, don't be, you know, like, he'll will, he will, he will pull, my, pull my ear, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tiny, I mean, Tiny has a lot of patience. Tiny is the type of, like, hitting coach that he, like, he don't say much, but if you – Let's say you like are, are all for three. He won't. He won't go. Like he won't be like bothering you. He won't be like all over you. You know what I mean? Right. He was a yeah. person that gives you. He gives you space. He's like, he understands. But at the same time, he has a lot of patience because this last year wasn't easy on him. I was. <laughs> I wasn't the most easy player. You know what I mean? Yeah. When it comes to talk to him about baseball, talk to him about hitting, but. He was always there, honestly, and uh, he was always ready to work, ready to do all everything. You know what I mean? 
Love it. You have a great perspective on it. And I know those two are, are great guys. Now, I know Gabe Kapler said about you, I read that he said, uh, you know, just having you in the clubhouse, that energy, it's infectious. It, it, it totally helps the team. When you brought up, you got a burst of energy. Give that team some energy. It's always been your, uh, has that always been with you being raised the way you were kind of in your early teens, that, that infectious energy you bring to the clubhouse and people you're around? Well, I mean, honestly, since I was in school, like a lot of people didn't like me because I was loud. Huh? <laughs> I was I was very loud, so people didn't like really. I mean, some people, but other people were my like cool, like they were my cool friends. You know what I mean? They were yeah. my best friends. Like I had a lot of friends, but honestly, like I don't try to do it. It's just like something that comes out. I just love the game. Like I love talking baseball. I love like being at the stadium. Like literally, I'm in my off season, just vacation back home and. I'm, I've been in the stadium, like, the whole week, every day, all day, working with my brother, watching him play, uh, just working on stuff, and I just like being here, you know what I mean? It's just, like, I like it so much that I can like, I can't even help but to be, like, excited and happy, you know what I mean? Absolutely. As you get ready for this 2023 season, I know you have, uh, you know, I don't want to talk really specific goals, but uh, your mindset, you said you have kind of a, cl you have a clear mind right now going into 23, 23 from what you learned in 2022. Can you tell the folks a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, the work that I'm putting in, in uh, 2022, like right now, this off season, it's, uh, I think it's good and I trust it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, uh, last year, I didn't really trust it. Uh, not, not that I didn't really trust the work, but at the same time, I was working without purpose, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. This year, I feel like I'm working in a different way. This year, I feel like I'm, like, like uh, working on some stuff that I never really thought about or thought of. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, honestly, if honestly, I'm going to make an example. Like, for example, um, literally shagging, just shagging, just catching fly balls. Like, that's something that's part of the game. That's something that's fun. You know what I mean? So it's like that alone that alone helps me like finding out how great baseball is you know what i mean it's not yeah. all struggling it's not all struggling it's not all like oh baseball is so hard you know what i mean they like of course baseball, see, baseball of course baseball is hard but at the same time you have to like find the fun part of it you know what i mean even if you are like struggling even if you are at your worst like at the end of the day it's a game and you have to treat it like it you know what i mean yeah find the appreciation of the game right appreciate it right yeah, yeah, just appreciate and appreciate that the moment, appreciate that I'm there, appreciate that I'm working, I'm like working towards something that I'm like up there, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Hey, we have our mailbag. We got a couple questions from uh uh the uh the the listeners and the followers of the podcast. Lucille News asks, who was the one player? I well, I know the answer to that, your brother, but who was the one player you looked up to growing up? Maybe besides your brother. Uh, uh, David Ortiz. I like David Ortiz a lot. When my brother signed with the Red Sox in 2010, uh, my brother brought me, like, uh, he flew me out to a spring training game in uh, Florida. Yeah. And he was like, hey, I have a surprise for you. Whenever he showed me the surprise, it was David Ortiz. And I oh. was, like, right in front of him. I took a picture. I still have the picture to this day. Yeah. Big thrill. Big thrill for you, huh? Yeah, yeah, that was that was crazy. And the next time I saw David Ortiz was in the Futures game when he was a manager. Oh my! For the God. yeah, for the for the national uh, for the world team, I think it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, he's pretty legendary. Now another Greg Bianchi or Bianchi, Greg Bianchi three, Greg Bianchi three asks if you could play with any two other outfielders in the history of baseball for one game, uh, who would they who would they be? Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. and Barry Bonds. Oh, no brainer, huh? Just like that, huh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Have you met Barry? Have you got a chance to meet Barry and get to know him a little bit? Uh, just uh, Sacramento this year, but uh, honestly, I didn't really talk. I just like shook his hand, say hi, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Wealth, wealth of knowledge. Hopefully, you get a chance to to pick his brain a little bit. You know, I know, right? I would. I wish I could. Yeah, for sure. Hey, listen, I'm excited for what's to come for you in 2023 with the Giants. And I look forward to seeing you in, in a couple of months. And uh, thank you for uh, for taking the time, my friend. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm excited for 2023. Honestly, it's going to be great for sure. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, brother. Thank you, my man. See you later. Thank you for listening to the Rivercats Nine Lives podcast, hosted by Johnny Dosco. 
Please like, subscribe, and share with all your baseball-loving friends. And make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. 